So welcome back. So we uh, already look at the uh, first uh, two subtopic, the overview as well the uh, 6.2 governing equations eh, for quasi one dimensional flow. So for the rest 50 minutes, we will look into the nozzle flows. As I already highlighted earlier, right? Uh, we will continue nozzle flows next week uh, on the examples. Eh? For today, we will look at the theoretical aspect. So to further study in nozzle flow, we must first derive an important equation eh, which relates Mark number to the ratio of duct area to the sonic throat area, right? So we know that this is the sonic throat area, the throat area, right? So we want to, to have a relationship okay, between the Mach number, Mach number with the duct area to sonic throat area. So we want to consider a figure here shown geometry for the derivation of the area mark number relation. So basically, let me just read through here, right? The, we assume that sonic flow exists. A sonic flow exists means that the mark number equal to one, right? And uh, it happened at the uh, throat area, we put it as a star there. Eh? The mark number and velocity at the throat are denoted by the mark number, the M star, as well as the velocity star. Basically, this is at uh, speed of sound, uh, which is equal to U star equal to A star, where Mach number star equal to 1, and the area is also A star. Right? So this is happening at the uh, throat area. So writing the previous continuity equation, okay, between the area A, so station A and station uh, at the throat. Eh? So we have the uh, density times velocity times the area at the throat where the where we have the symbol star there, right? And uh, which is equal to the density times the velocity and area at this station, right? So since we know that uh, the velocity equal to the speed of sound, uh, the equation becomes this. Eh? We can then rearrange it to so where uh, rho naught is the stagnation density and is constant throughout the isentropic flow, right? So from our previous stagnation equation, right, we, we already have this uh, stagnation equation, but now you can see that we have the uh, density at the throat eh, where sonic uh, condition occurs, right? And also from our uh, uh, previous generation lecture, we have uh, this expression with, with the Mach number inside there. And recalling the definition of the Mach number, right? We can then rewrite this equation as this. Eh? So we have the component of the of the Mach number. When we want to uh, square the equation, squaring the equation, right? We uh, this this equation that we we already expressed earlier right, from here, right? We want to square the the expression. So we have this component. Everything is squared. Right? So put all the stagnation equations inside the relation. So we want to put this expression right inside uh, this stagnation equation so we can then have this expression. All right. So quite a lengthy expression uh, where we have A over A star, the area at station 2 uh, over the area at the, at the throat, right? So algebraically, simplifying the above equation, Right. The, the very lengthy equation, we can then uh, have a shorter expression, right? So this equation basically a very important equation. It is called the area mark number relation. So you can see that the, the component of mark number uh, is, is uh, available there, 
and we only have the ratio of the area to the area at the at the throat so what we can uh, the equation tell us basically the Mach number is a function of the ratio of the area eh? area divided by the area star eh? that is the Mach number at any location in the duct is the function of the ratio of the local duct area to the sonic throat area and this equation yields two solutions eh, for the Mach number at any given ratio of the uh, local area to the sonic throat area a subsonic value and a supersonic value so we can get both eh, a subsonic value and a supersonic value due to the power of two in the equation so the result of this ratio the area ratio to the sonic throat area as a function of Mach number can be obtained in the appendix A, right? So we have already looked at appendix A before. So this is what it looks like. So you can see here, uh, there are uh, appendix A itself. If you carefully look at the Mach number, right? Anything less than one is the subsonic uh, uh, data and anything more than mark number one is the uh, 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 supersonic. Eh? More, one is sonic, more than one is supersonic, right? So, and then you can have a, a ratio of the pressure, ratio of the density, ratio of the temperature, as well as the ratio of the area over the sonic throat area. We will look into the example on how to use the table right in our in next week lecture not today right we, we will look into example on how to look for the answers using the appendix a okay examining the appendix a we note that for subsonic values of mark number as mark number increases the the ratio of the area decreases okay? meaning that the duct converges Right, so the the uh, the duct itself, the area converge. Eh? It is uh, getting from big bigger area to a smaller area. So at Mach number equal to one, right, the ratio uh, equal to one as shown in appendix A. If you want to go into appendix A, you can then check it out whether it is true or not. Eh? Finally, for supersonic values of Mach number, as Mach number increases the ratio of the area over the sonic throat area also increases meaning that the duct then diverges it is it, go away from each other so this trend in appendix a are consistent with our previous physical discussion of convergent divergent ducts and moreover the appendix a shows the double valued nature of Mach number as a function of the ratio of the area over the sonic air, throat area and for example if we take up the uh, value here uh, area as uh, ratio of area over a star the sonic throat area equal to 2 we then have either 0 0.31 or 2.2 right so you you have to uh, look into which one is the correct answer right so consider a given convergent divergent nozzle so we have a, a case here figure six isentropic supersonic uh, nozzle flow okay this is figure 6a because we have uh, other figure for 6a as well uh, sorry for for figure six we have other uh, sub figures eh? assuming that the area ratio at the inlet is ai we now use ai right ai uh, over A star, A star still at the throat area, right? And AE uh, correspond to the exit. Okay, I inlet, E exit, right? So uh, the area ratio at the inlet is uh, very large and that the flow at the inlet is fed from a large gas, gas reservoir, right? where is the gas is essentially stationary. So imagine it's coming from a very large reservoir or on the left hand side so basically the u equal to zero because the gas is stationary so the reservoir pressure 
and the temperature are considered as P0 and T0, right, respectively. So since the AI, the area ratio inlet over the throat area in uh, area is very large because we put it here as uh, because uh, AI is very large. Eh? So uh, in approaching infinity, eh, the subsonic Mach number at the inlet is considered to be very small, right? So, so the subsonic Mach number is uh, approximately zero, eh? nearly near to zero, approximately equal to zero. So thus the pressure and temperature at the inlet are essentially P0 and T0 respectively. Okay, so the area distribution of the nozzle A uh, is a function of the area at uh, X direction is specified so that the A over A0, A star ratio is known at every station along the nozzle. So we can... Uh, we know already which uh, along the nozzle, as long as we know the area, we can that get, get the ratio. Then the area of the throat is denoted by AT, right? So this is AT, area at the throat, and AZ area is denoted by AE. The Mach number and static pressure at the exit denoted by ME and PE respectively. Now, we want to assume that we have isentropic expansion of the gas eh, through this nozzle to supersonic Mach number ME or Mach number at exit equal to ME6. Eh. Why 6? Eh? Later on, we will uh, give reason why the subscript 6 uh, is appearing here. Why not suddenly? Why suddenly 6? Eh? So the corresponding exit pressure, so we also denote it as PE6, P exit 6, for this expansion, the flow is sonic at the throat, hence Mach number equal to 1 at, at the throat, and AT equal to A star at the, at the throat. So the flow properties through the nozzle are a function of the local area ratio A over A star, and obtained as follows. Eh? Number 1 is that the local Mach number as a function of the X direction more directly from tabulated values in Appendix A, right? And for specified A equal to A as a function of X, we know the corresponding uh, ratio A over A star is a function of X direction. So then read the related subsonic Mach numbers in the convergent portion of the nozzle okay, from the first part of Appendix A when Mach number less than 1, then relate the sub supersonic Mach number in the divergent portion of the nozzle from the second part of append Appendix A. If you go through uh, the next page of Appendix A, you will then see that when Mach number more than 1. And the Mach number distribution through the complete nozzle is thus obtained, is sketched in this 6B. So as I said, just now we have 6A, then we have 6B, where we have the Mach number uh, with respect to the X direction. So so we we have this. Eh? This is um, uh, the 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 line given here is calculated from the equation that we already derived earlier and also tabulated in Appendix A. So those values in, in the Appendix A, right, the Mach number in the X direction is, is, is uh, basically can be tabulated like this, can be sketched, uh, plot like this. Eh? So once the Mach number distribution is known, and we know that the distribution of the Mach number along the x direction, right? We uh, then uh, uh, know the corresponding variation of the temperature, the pressure, and density. And we can also uh, find the corresponding values of P, T, and rho, or more directly from the appendix A itself. Right? So the distribution of the ratio of the pressure, the ratio of the temperature can be sketched as well as shown in figure 6C and 6D. And this is for the pressure along the 
uh, duct and the temperature along the duct and right? the pressure and the temperature are in, uh, decreasing right so examining the variations as shown in figure six now i put back together a b c and d right so that you can we can imagine where uh, the location of the x with respect to the uh, values over here right? uh, x zero over there x uh, value x over here so this is for the Mach number variation increases the pressure ratio distribution as well as temperature uh, ratio distribution so for isentropic expansion of gas through a convergent divergent nozzle so this nozzle converge and then diverge back eh? the Mach number monotonically increases from near zero at the inlet so we starting there near zero at the inlet okay reaching one at the throat and increases uh, until the we reach mark uh, at the exit me6 eh? so the pressure monotonically decreases from p naught atmospheric okay at and then at the uh, inlet at the throat over here is uh, 0 0.528 okay from uh, this equation or from the appendix a to the lower value of p e6 right it it, it is it does not go to zero eh? because uh, we still have a pressure uh, at the exit over there right similarly with the temperature okay it monotonically decreases from t naught at the inlet to uh, t naught at the inlet t naught equal to one okay and it reaches at the throat at 0 0.833 and to the lower value of te6 at the exit okay again for the isentropic flow shown in figure six we emphasize that the distribution of the Mach number this distribution of the Mach number okay right and hence resulting distribution of the pressure and temperature through the nozzle depends only the ratio of the area area over the area at the throat eh? so this is the key to the analysis of isentropic supersonic quasi one dimensional nozzle flows so imagine eh, i want to uh, to shoot, uh, ask you a few questions over here that you take a convergent divergent nozzle right and simply place it on a table in front of you what is it going to happen so is the air going to suddenly start flowing through the nozzle of its own accord without any force uh, on the air or of course not eh? because the air cannot just move by itself and eh? rather by this stage in your study of aerodynamics aerodynamics eh, your institution should tell you that we have to impose a force so we have to create an induce or maybe a fan maybe something that can push the air to produce acceleration so the air has to be forced to go into the the uh, nozzle like eh, convergent divergent nozzle so for the in visit flows considered here the only mechanism to produce an accelerating force on the gas is pressure gradient so if you uh, change the pressure so obviously it will force the air to move right so thus returning to the nozzle on the table a pressure difference must be created right you want to make sure that there, there is a significant pressure different between inlet and exit then only the gas will flow through if there the the pressure is the same ambient over here inlet ambient also at the exit so there will be no flow of air okay? the gas will not flow into the nozzle so the exit pressure must be less than the inlet pressure that is pe is less than p naught right moreover if we wish to produce the isentropic supersonic flow as sketched in the earlier figure figure six just now eh? the pressure pe over p naught the ratio of pe over p naught must be precisely the value stipulated by appendix a for the known exit mark number me6 that is 
the ratio of PE over P0 equal to PE6 over P0. Okay. So if the pressure is different from the above isentropic value, the flow either inside or outside the nozzle will be different from the shown given in figure 6. Right? So let us examine the type of nozzle flows eh, that occur when the ratio of PE over P0 is not equal to the precise isentropic value from appendix A, right? Uh, for ME6, that is when PE over P0 equal to PE6 over P0, right? This is when we, we have an, a different example. So to begin with, consider a convergent divergent nozzle sketch here, okay, figure 7A. So if the PE over P0, PE is equal to P0, right? When we say that, or oh, the pressure over here equal to the pressure at the exit, no pressure different, no flow occurs in the nozzle. So we have already discussed that. So now, assume that the PE is minutely reduced okay, below P0. We, we want to just reduce it slightly. Okay, Say PE is 0 0.99 P0, this small pressure difference will produce a very low speed subsonic because when there is no different, uh, sorry, when the pressure at the inlet equal to exit, there will be no pressure different, no flow of air. Slight different decrease of the exit pressure will induce, eh? it will uh, get the flow of air or the gas at very low speed, okay? going into the nozzle as a gentle wind. Right. So the local Mach number will increase, right? As it, at, as uh, uh, we can see here, eh? uh, it will increase slightly eh? through the convergent portion reaching a maximum value at the throat. So whether it is uh, um, reaching one or not, uh, we will discuss here. So this Mach number at the throat will not be sonic because it's only small pressure different, right? Rather it will be some small subsonic value maybe uh, is at a, a 0 0.25 or 0 0.4 Mach number okay right um, at the throat over there right so so the local Mach number will decrease in the divergent section so basically when it goes to the divergent section it will then start to decrease right reaching a very small but finite value of Mach number me1 Correspondingly, yeah, the pressure in the convergence section will gradually decreases, right? It will gradually decreases from the uh, inlet value, okay? And then gradually increases back, right? To the exit, right? So this variation is shown as curve one in figure 7C. You can see here, it reduces a little bit and then increases a little bit back but still less than P0, right? Please note that because the flow is not sonic at the throat, in this case, the area of the throat is not equal to the area of A star. Okay? Recall the A star, which is when Mach number equal to 1, okay? sonic throat area. So in the case of purely subsonic flow, okay, through a convergent divergent nozzle, the A star takes on a character of reference area. It is not the same as the actual geometric area of the nozzle throat AT. Rather, A star area at the sonic throat is the area in the flow. It right? would have if it were somehow accelerated to sonic velocity. So if this did happen, right? the flow area would have to be decreased further than shown in figure 7a. Hence, for purely subsonic flow, we have a condition that the area of the throat is greater than the area at the sonic throat, A star. Assume that we further decrease the exit pressure. So instead of a very small uh, pressure decrease, we then increase it a little bit, decrease it further from PE1 to PE2 or PE3. 
right? So now we consider PE equal to PE2. Right? The flow is now illustrated here in um, figure, the curve number two now. The flow moves much faster right, through the nozzle and the maximum Mach number at the throat increases but still remain less than one. Now let us reduce PE equal to PE3, reduce it further, right? Such the flow just reach sonic condition at the throat. So if we can see here, it's shown in curve number three, the throat mark number is one and the throat pressure is 0 0.528 P naught. And the flow downstream of the throat is subsonic. Okay. So upon comparing figure 6 as well as figure 7. We are struck by an important physical difference. For a given nozzle shape, there is only one allowable isentropic flow solutions for the supersonic code case shown in figure 6. So, but in contrast, there are an infinite number of possible isentropic subsonic solution each one corresponding to some value of the exit pressure, right? Where the exit pressure PE is in between P naught, okay, the, the initial uh, inlet P pressure, to the PE3. Okay? Only three solutions in this infinite set of solutions are sketched. Hence, the key factors for the analysis of purely subsonic flow in convergent divergent nozzle are both the ratio of the area to the sonic throat area and the ratio of the exit pressure to the inlet pressure okay consider the mass flow through the convergent divergent nozzle in figure 7 as the exit pressure decrease the flow velocity of the throat increase right so hence the mass flow increases Okay, I hope you can get that. So the mass flow can then be calculated by evaluating at the throat itself where m dot equal to rho t, t is the throat, time velocity at the throat and the area at the throat. As the exit pressure decreases, the velocity at the throat increases and the density at the throat decreases. All right, however, the percentage increase in the throat velocity is much greater than the decrease in the density at the throat. As a result, if we plot the mass flow, okay, we plot the mass flow, m, m dot increases as sketched in figure 8 where we have a variation of mass flow with exit pressure, right? So we have the exit pressure, okay, pressure here. P, uh, reaching P0, P3, P, and, and this is the 0 0.528 P0, and this is P0. Eh? Sorry, this is P0. Eh? So, so when the exit pressure equal to PE3, right, exit pressure equal to PE3, the sonic flow is achieved at the, at the throat. Okay? And M0 equal to the rho UA star, which is equal to rho UA throat. Okay, now, if the PE is further decreased, reduce, right, PE is re further reduced, right, uh, we come into a condition that the throat take on new behavior, they remain unchanged. So, it just remain un unchanged over there. All right. So, from our discussion, so the Mach number at the throat cannot exceed 1. Okay, that's a rule, right? Okay. Hence, as the exit pressure further reduce, the Mach number will remain equal to 1 okay, at the throat. Consequently, the mass flow will remain constant as the exit pressure reduce below PE3 as shown in figure 8. Okay. As shown in figure 8, um, it just remain the same over here. Okay. So, in the sense, the flow at the throat as well as the upstream of the throat become frozen. Okay, once the flow becomes sonic at the throat, disturbances cannot work their way upstream of the throat. Hence, 
the flow in the convergence section of the nozzle no longer communicate with the exit pressure and has no way of knowing that the exit pressure is continuing to decrease. So this situation when the flow goes sonic at the throat and the mass flow remains constant no matter how low the exit pressure is reduced is called the choke flow, the choke condition. Right? So when, when there's a, uh, the flow uh, remains constant. Eh? And it is a vital aspect of the compressible flow through ducts and we consider it in our subsequent discussion later on. So we return to our subsonic flow nozzle sketch in figure 7. So now we want to see what happened to the Mach number, what happened to the pressure ratio. The question is that what happened in the duct when the exit pressure is reduced below PE3? What happened if we go below PE3, right? So in the convergent portion, as described below, above, nothing happened, okay? But the flow properties remain fixed at the condition shown by curve 3, okay? by curve 3 over here, right? Um, in the convergent section of the duct, okay, the left side of 7B, the left side of 7B, and the left the uh, left side of 7c over here right however a lot happened in the divergent section if you see here in the divergent section this is the divergent section okay so a lot happened over there okay as the exit pressure reduced below pe3 the region of supersonic flow appears downstream of the throat okay? however the exit pressure is too high to allow isentropic supersonic flow throughout the entire divergent section. So instead, the exit pressure less than PE3 but substantially higher than the fully isentropic value PE6. Okay, remember we have figure 6C. Okay, this is the figure 6C, right, where PE6 is the uh, fully isentropic value, where a normal shock is formed downstream of the of the throat so this situation is sketched in figure 9 okay, it's given in figure 9 over here so in figure 9 the exit pressure has been reduced to pe4 right in this uh, the exit pressure already reduced to pe4 eh? okay where pe4 is less than pe3 obviously we reduce pe3 to pe4 but PE4 is also substantially higher than PE6. It's more than PE6 because PE6 is the fully uh, isentropic flow. Eh? So here we observe a normal shock. Normal shock we're standing inside the nozzle at a distant D. Eh? Distant D. This is distant D, right? Uh, downstream of the throat. Between the throat and the normal shock wave, the flow is given by the supersonic isentropic solution as shown in figure 9b this is the mark number supersonic isotropic solution okay and then figure 9c showing the uh, pressure ratio where the flow is subsonic okay so these subsonic flows seize the divergent duct and isentropically slows down further as it moves to the exit right so correspondingly, the pressure experiences a discontinuous increase eh, across the shock wave and then is further increased as the flow slows down to the exit. You can see that there's a shock happening. Okay. So it's not it's not smooth at like, like before. Eh? So the flow on both the left and right side of the shock wave is isentropic. However, entropy increases across the shock wave. So hence, the flow on the left side of the shock wave is isentropic with one value of entropy and the flow on the right side of the shock wave is isentropic with another value of entropy, S2, where we know that S2, the entropy at station 2 is more than entropy at station 1. Okay? The location of the shock wave inside the nozzle is given in, in uh, figure 9, uh, 
uh, by D in figure 9A. So this is uh, uh, the location of the shock wave inside the uh, nozzle when the flow, the, the area is converged, sorry, diverged. Yeah? So by the requirement that the increase in static pressure across the wave plus that the divergent portion and the, 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 the nozzle diverge of the subsonic flow behind the shock be just right to achieve PE4 at the exit. As the exit pressure further reduce, we want to further reduce exit pressure from PE4 to PE5 and eventually reaching PE6, okay? Um, closer to the nozzle exit at the certain value where the exit pressure itself already reaching PE5, the normal shock stand precisely at the exit, right? But uh, where before it is happening bef um, uh, at a D distance um, before the exit. Eh? So this is being sketched in figure 10A to 10C. Eh? At this stage, when PE equal to PE5, the flow through the entire nozzle except precisely at the exit is already isentropic. Okay. So to this stage in our discussion, we have dealt with PE, right? The exit pressure. We decrease it from PE3 to PE4, PE5 until PE6. We see that the location of the, uh, the, the effect, eh, the shock uh, happening. Eh? So in figure 6, 7, 9, as well as 10A, B and C, 10A, B and C over here, we have not been concerned with the flow downstream of the nozzle exit. All right. So now imagine that the nozzle in figure A, nozzle in showing in figure 10A over here, exhaust directly to a region of surrounding gas downstream of the exit. Right. So, oops, sorry. So these surroundings could be example the atmosphere so the basically the nozzle itself being released uh, to the atmos atmospheric pressure eh? so in any case the pressure of the surrounding downstream of the exit is defined as the back pressure denoted by pb right so when the flow at the nozzle exit is subsonic the exit pressure must equal to the back pressure so pe at the uh, exit of the nozzle must be equal to the PB, right? the back pressure, because a pressure discontinuity cannot be maintained in the steady subsonic flow. right? That's why we want to make sure it is equal to PB, PE equal to PB. That is, when the exit flow is subsonic, the surrounding back pressure is impressed on the exit flow. Hence, in figure 7, the PB itself the back pressure will be equal to PE1, where we know that it is uh, shown in as curve 1. When PB equal to PE2 is shown by curve 2, and PB equal to PE3 is shown by curve number 3. So for the same reason, PB equal to PE4 in figure 9, and PB equal to PE5 in figure 10. Hence, in discussing these figures, Instead of stating that we reduce the exit pressure PE and observe the consequences, we could just well state that we reduce the back pressure PB, right? Because the PE is already equal to PB. It would have amounted to the same result, to the same thing. So for the remainder of our discussion today, we want to imagine that we have control over the back pressure and that we are going to continue to decrease, decrease the back pressure. Consider the case when the back pressure is reduced below PE5, when PE6 is, sorry, back pressure PB is in between PE5 and PE6. So the back pressure is still above the isentropic pressure at the nozzle exit. So if it is, uh, isentropic pressure at the nozzle is it is already PE6 okay so what happened is that 
in flowing out to the surrounding, the flow itself and the jet of gas from the nozzle must somehow be compressed. And that is pressure is compatible with PB and this compression takes place across oblique shock. And you can see that there are oblique shock appearing at the nozzle exit, right? And uh, it's being shown as this uh, figure 10D, it is an overexpanded nozzle. In the case of overexpanded nozzle, okay, so you can see the, um, the appearance of the oblique shock waves. So when the PB is reduced to the value such, the PB itself is equal to PE6. There is no mismatch of exit pressure as well as the back pressure, the nozzle jet exhaust smoothly into the surrounding without passing through any wave. That's why there's no, there's no oblique shock appearance. Okay, so supersonic nozzle over here uh, with wave uh, for this particular uh, chart is isentropic expansion to the back pressure equal to the exit pressure, PB equal to PE6, right? Finally, when PB reduce below P6, what happened? It goes below P6, eh, PE6. And eh? the jet of the gas from the nozzle must be expanded further in order to match the lower back pressure. So this created expansion wave. So if it is going below PE6, expansion wave will, will occur. So if, in your experiment, for example, if you are taking uh, uh, high speed, uh, supersonic experiments in a uh, nozzle, you will see if it is uh, showing an uh, oblique shock wave, meaning that the PE, PB is in, uh, in between PE5 and PE6. If you are uh, looking at an expansion wave, right, as uh, shown in this figure 10F under expanded nozzle, it is actually already go below PE6, all right? So when this situation in figure D exists, the oblique shock, right? The nozzle is said to be over expanded because the pressure at the exit has expanded below the back pressure. So that is the nozzle expansion has gone too far, over expanded. Eh? So, and jet must pass through oblique shock in order to come back to the higher back pressure. Conversely, when it is under expanded, the nozzle is said to be uh, exit pressure is higher than the back pressure, right? The, the basically exit pressure is higher than back pressure, hence the flow is capable of additional expansion after leaving the nozzle. So it is under expanded nozzle in terms of the design of the nozzle. So surveying through figure 6 uh, uh, until figure 10, we note that purely isentropic supersonic flow originally illustrated in figure 6, okay, exists throughout the nozzle for all cases when the back pressure equal to the exit PE5 pressure. For example, in figure 10A, we want to refer to 10A back, the isentropic supersonic flow solution holes throughout the nozzle except right at the exit where normal shock exists, right? So in, in figure 10D, 10E, 10F, right? The flow through the entire nozzle, including the exit plane, is given by the isentropic supersonic flow solution. So keep in mind that our entire discussion of nozzle flow in this section is predicated on having a duct of given shape and we assume that the area itself is a function of the area and in x direction which is prescribed and when this is in the case the quasi one dimensional theory of this chapter gives a reasonable prediction of the flow inside the duct where the results are interpreted as mean properties average over each cross section so this theory does not tell us how to design the contour of the nozzle. Uh, in reality, uh, before we end, if the walls of the nozzle are not curved just right, okay, then oblique shock occurs inside the nozzle. Imagine that 
the the wall of the nozzle uh, collapse right uh, it will also disrupt the flow of obviously and and destroy the 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 rocket engine eh? so or the contour are not being designed carefully so you will get uh, oblique shock occurring eh, in the inside the nozzle so to obtain a proper contour for a supersonic nozzle so that it produces isentropic shock free flow inside the nozzle we must account for the three dimensionality of the actual flow so this is one purpose of the method of characteristics a technique for applying two and three dimensional supersonic flow so with that as i said we will look at a couple of examples right uh, next week so that we can really appreciate on what's going on inside a nozzle compressible flow through nozzles and uh, we all we are going to apply some of the equations that we have already found for the quasi one dimensional flow in uh, examples before we go into the diffusers topic eh? so with that thank you very much